updating a unit. So this is when we this is when you get find out, you, know, you get that email from training.gov.au saying, hey, this unit's being superseded. It's so exciting. There's a new unit. And you're like groaning, going, oh, great. Here we go through another process again. So the idea is they've improved the unit to be better, faster, quicker, shinier than the last one. Um, and they're gonna, there's going to be a transition time when they're wanting you to get rid of the old unit or, uh, you know, sort of retire the old unit and bring on the new unit. And so you've got all the stuff you've got to do. You've got to get trainers up to speed. You've got to get um, your course materials up to speed. You've got to get the customers up to speed with the changes. Um, maybe you've got things like um, uh, uh, all your documentation has to be updated. Um, all the stuff that the auditor is going to love to check to see if you did the transition correctly. Um, so, um, so feel free to uh, feel free to groan as much as you want when this happens. Um, but um, but let's see if we can we can make it make it work. So, updating a unit. So from the course owner's point of view, um, what I'm gonna get you to do is uh, we're gonna review the units and uh, topics. So we can do that review again, have a look at that diagram again, just to refresh our memory. Um, so Kate, this is definitely for you because uh, basically Kane dreams this, you know, he's basically he wakes up at night after, you know, having such a good night's sleep and he goes, oh, I was dreaming about course sales last night. That's what he says in the morning. Um, and all those kids nod and they say, oh dad, tell us another course sales story. Um, while they're sitting at the at the breakfast table. Um, and you're going to talk about strategy to update units, some scenarios, some suggestions, talking about superseded units or fixing existing units, which is what basically what we were talking about previously, how to fix up some of these existing units. Um, steps to add a new unit. We're going to talk about creating a course module. This is from scratch as opposed to fixing one already. Uh, talking about adding to a format and copying to course dates and documents. Okay, so uh, again, yeah, this will be familiar to you. You would have had a look at this already, um, but this is looking from a different perspective. This is when you're told you have to do an update and you're going to go through this process. The last one was dealing, firefighting basically, it was dealing with an issue that you'd had, um, that you'd found out about. So again, reviewing the units and topics. Remember, units are specified in the course modules, which are specified on the topics, which are in the format of the course master. And then that, and then upon creating a course date, those topics um, are copied to the course date from the course master on the format of the course master. And then the process rule then copies. I know it says links there, but just weird, that's a co that's copies them in. So they're effectively they're independent. Once they're on the document, these are independent topics. They're document topics that are independent from the course date topics. Okay, so just keep this diagram in mind. It'll hopefully explain the concept. And so you can effectively update your course because these are copied in and the topic references the course module, updating the course module can be done at any time and it'll actually have a flow on effect. So updating the course module will affect that. The topic isn't, but the course module is. So updating the course module will have an effect on these. Updating the topic does not. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so is the unit superseded or current? Well, again, like we did before when we were looking at train.gov.au, we had a look and we saw that yes, this unit has been superseded and superseded and equivalent to this new unit here. And this is the new unit here, which is current. Okay, and it came out just on 30th of January, so quite recently. Okay, so this is this tells you whether or not the units are superseded or current. And if you're getting the notifications for train.gov.au, then you should be receiving notifications of when that happens. Okay, so strategy to update the units. First of all, get the information from training.gov.au. Work out if they're superseded units and then plan a transition. Plan a transition to do this. Um, or was there a, um, a mistake regarding unit, the unit allocated? Did you allocate a unit you don't have um, on scope? Would it be easier just to get that unit on scope? Or do you have to um, change a unit because you mistakenly put it into the, uh, the student's documents? So the current situation, where are you at the moment? Will our future students affected or our past students affected? Now, these are important questions to ask because they impact what changes you need to make. And then if you're doing a transition, can you run both the units at the same time? So may you, maybe you're gonna have some courses that are running the old unit and some courses running the new unit. So keep that in mind too. Okay, so the, what are the scenarios? The majority of these changes are superseded units. 
Okay, so the majority of changes are superseded units. This means just adding to the existing format and use a transition to cater for existing and future. Okay, so use a transition. That is a transition plan, which tells you when it basically copies both of the units onto each of the course dates. And depending on the course, you'll be using the different units. And you can actually remove the, um, the course topics if you want to from the different course dates, depending on which one. Like you, for example, might have two trainers delivering. One trainer has got that certification to uh, deliver the new unit, the other one hasn't. So whenever you set up a course date that is for that trainer that has permission to deliver that new unit, you take off the old unit and say, right, you're delivering the new unit. That could be one way of doing it and being able to cater for those that transition period. Some changes need to edit existing units. So you might need to edit like the one we just saw before. Remember, just the, in the last session we did, we talked about editing an existing unit. So you can replace or edit existing course modules. It might be that you need to replace it completely. So you need to really, you need to, to basically copy over everything that you've done before because you realize you did it wrong. But be aware, this can have significant impact and it can affect reporting. Okay, depending on exactly what you're planning on editing. Obviously, editing just at the um, just at the, the course topic does not have an effect. But if you're going to edit course modules, that will have an effect on reporting. But maybe an effect that you're wanting to have. Maybe you're wanting to be very clear that you've allocated people a different uh, unit of competency. Okay, so the course module management I'm going to talk about how you can manage the course modules within the options area um, that's done to publish options um, in, a, in an effective way. I'm going to show you how you can order the different units as they get superseded. I'm going to show you how you can track which is the current and which are the past units as well. Okay, so adding a course module. This is how you do it. You go into the publish tab, you click on options, and then click on the tree view here for the course module. That's how you go in to look at the course modules. Once you're in there, you can click on the cog. So that'll say course module. Then you'll have your first module there. Click on the cog. You can say add after this node and look at this. We've got the ability to add a course module, get the subject identifier, which is the unit of competency. Link it to a program if necessary. If you're doing single units like RSA and RCG and um, uh, HLTAA, 001 for first aid or anything like that, you don't have to worry about linking to a program. Only if it's part of a program do you have to do this. You have to select the delivery mode identifier and an event flag. So this is really the only three bits of data you guys need if you're delivering short, single or, or um, double unit courses and click on add. Once you've added the course module to the for now you've got to add the course module to the format. You create the course module, now you've got to create the format. Or if it's already there, you can just click on the little plus button here and that you can add an additional um, topic. And when we add the topic, you can see here, we select the course module. The course module is linked to the topic. And then the whole topic gets copied to the course date and then from the course date gets copied to the document. Just click on that little plus sign and add an extra topic. Now, if you wanna remove it, you just click on the little X there and that'll remove it from the format. Now, this is what we've talked about previously. So the format's updated and the course dates are affected. Use the copy to course date from the master. So if you are going to update your format, you need to copy the course dates from the master. Again, requires management permissions. It's only going to go to the scheduled courses. So this means that if you do need to copy it to courses that were, that were um, uh, in the past and they are no longer scheduled, they are now called completed courses, those courses will not be updated, but you can change the status of them to scheduled and then reapply it and it will then copy to those courses then change those course dates back to completed again. And you only really need to do this sort of, sort of back to completed if you're worried about them appearing on your, um, on your um, website. Although the course, the WordPress plugin, just for um, those people using the WordPress plugin, namely Kane, um, it doesn't display courses that are in the past. You'll notice that if you put a course in the past, it will not display. Only courses current and in the future are actually going to be displayed on your website in WordPress. 
and then only overwrite if you're sure. Now at this point, again, we're copying into the core state. So overwriting on the, on the core states is not such an issue. So don't worry about this so much. You can do that and it's not going to have too much of a dramatic effect um, on, your, um, on your documents, that's for sure. So usually you can do that pretty safely. But this is the bit you have to be careful about. So if you're going to, if you're going to copy the course topics, if they need to be updated um, and current and past documents are affected because okay? everything on the course date. So when you go to the course date and you want to copy it across, you can overwrite them and it's going to copy all the current documents, copy these new course topics to become document topics on all of those documents. And again, requires management permissions um, and overwrite existing if you're sure. Okay, just be aware of that if you're sure. And then you need to go on and double check. This is the same slide we had before. Check to make sure um, that it's correctly occurred. Um, and you can see here how we've lost the outcome uh, details when we've done that. So this is talking about the management. So this is managing your options. So you can see here, um, if you go into your, do that, and I, I'll just show you, if I go to back here, we just go back to this point. You see here, this is what I'm showing you. I'm showing you the outcome tree and you get that by going publish options, clicking on the tree view. And once you're there, you see you, this is your editing, but I'm gonna show you a view of having created all of these units. Just zoom forward a bit. There you go. So we've created the units now and you can see how I've actually nested them. So I've actually created a name and then below that I'll put CPR and below that I'll put another first aid sort of folder or nesting option. Okay, these are not reportable. They're just literally sitting there just as a name and then I've grouped them together. So I had, I've, I've renamed these. As I go, I rename these. So as this gets replaced by the next unit of competency, I'm going to change current to old and I'm going to add the next one above it. So I've always got the current one right at the top. You can see there how I've grouped them together. Getting Managing these in an efficient way is a really important thing to do because then you're able to keep track of uh, replacements. So you might not, when you're starting off and you've only got one unit, it all seems very easy. The moment you have two or three, it starts to get much more complicated. So being able to nest these together and to open them up to have a look at which one's the current one, that's, um, that's a and you can actually move these around into any sort of arrangement you want. It has no effect on reporting. Okay, it's got no effect on reporting or on anything for that matter. It doesn't have any effect other than just your ability to see them in a neat and organized way. Yeah, definitely. It's worthwhile doing a, doing a regular per year activity of going in and cleaning these up because if these are cleaned up, you don't have this confusion when someone goes in and creates um, an extra document topic or an extra course module or something by mistake when they don't realize it's already in there. That's the classic one, right? When you get a whole lot, this is for example, like 97. I've seen some organizations with literally 300 of these and they've not been organized and they're just like a huge, big, long list. You really need to organize them. Sometimes you can organize them. It's, it's if you're delivering qualifications, a good, another good way of structuring this is actually having a, a organizing them by qualification because you tend to have to create different units because in the units we specify the program or the qualification they belong to. So you have to actually effectively duplicate a unit to represent the new qualification or the different qualification. When you're doing single units here, we can just create them just under a, under a, a section basically. Okay, so you're saying, um, or are they applying and rename or are or they are applying filter and need to select the correct one from the list. Yes, that's right. You do need to apply the filter and select the correct one from the list. Yeah, that's correct. And, and at some point, maybe, um, you know, once, you, once you're sure you're not going to get any requests for these, you could actually make them inactive, but there's nothing wrong with keeping them active there and keeping them available. Um, applying the filter. If they filter by the word current, uh, you know, if you've got a consistent naming convention, so current, colon, space, and then the ID, that can be a really good way of getting them the right one. Um, so at least tell people don't ever add one and that's not current. Um, and the good thing is if you rename this um, old, you can actually just scan your format and look for where old is mentioned. If old is anywhere in there, you've clearly got the wrong course module linked within that format. So really, so if you update the name here, the name of that course module gets updated on the formats. This is beautiful, right? This is fantastic. This enables you to be able to quickly scan through and check if you've got any incorrect course modules set up within your formats. 
So that's pretty handy. And here's a tip. You can actually edit the course modules from the format. So if I'm looking at a format, I can just click on the little edit button here beside the course module and bingo, I can edit that actual course module. So rather than going into options, I can edit the course modules from the format, which is a brilliant way to do it, right? Rather than scrolling through all your formats and your options, you can quickly update them here. And the updating it here will update it in the options. Um, which is a pretty clever way of doing it because then you can make sure you're editing the right one um, and you can make sure you've got the right names and the right details are there as well. So that's a really good way of, of doing a bit of a health check. Um, in fact, I'm quite keen to actually do a, a whole session on health checks to, to basically review your entire system and make sure it's functioning as you expect. Okay, so let's head into the quiz then. So which consideration will affect your decision to copy course topics to documents? So which consideration will affect your decision to copy course topics to documents? So is it going to be if the unit is superseded is, or is an error? Will that affect? Or is it if only one course module is updated? Does that decide if you're going to copy the course topics to the documents? Or is it if the current or past documents are affected? Or is it if reporting is near? So reporting is near as the panic stage. Um, I think in this instance, it's going to be if the current or past documents are affected. Okay, so if documents have inaccurate topics, then copying these to the existing documents might be required. This might impact the existing records, so copy to the documents carefully. Now, just copying and not replacing, not overwriting, that's perfectly fine. That'll have no detrimental effect but overwriting will have a detrimental effect or have an effect, whether it's detrimental or not, depends on whether there was data in there to protect. So, it, so if the unit of superseded was an error, that's not a reason to therefore copy the course topics to the documents. You have to actually make sure, are they actually affected? Are the documents affected for it to be a reason? And only if one course, if only one course module is updated, that doesn't, that's not a reason to copy the course topics of the documents here. That's only if the documents are actually affected do you need to do that. Okay, next question. Is it possible to update the course modules with no need to update the document topics? Well, this is definitely possible. This is definitely possible because the course module remains connected to the document topic. Okay, so the course module is consistent between the format, the course topics, and the document topics. So if the document topic is connected to the course module, it may not, if it's the right course module, it might not even be necessary to copy the topics to the documents when the course modules have not changed. Because what you could do is you could update the course modules. If it's not a different course module, you can update that existing course module with the right information. You could even, I mean, this is pretty weird, but you can even have the document topic with a different name to the course module. You could even have that because the reporting happens at the course module level, not at the document topic level. So if you're willing to put up with a different naming convention between the document topic and the course module, just to get the correct information there, you could actually not even have to update the document topic. So you might have an inconsistency there, but if it's an inconsistency you're willing to put up with, you could just update the course module. So the reporting is from the course module data. It's not even the course module name, it's the course module data. It's the subject identifier um, that, and, and all those sort of eventless information that's found on the course module that matters. <clears throat> this is why updating the existing course module, if a fix is required, is always better, is always a better solution. It might lead to some name differences that, as I just mentioned, the topic may refer to an outdated unit while the updated unit is on the course module because that's what we go to for reporting. Okay, so it might take a little bit to get your head around that, um, but um, if you have difficulties, just let me know and I can, I can help you out. So why should course modules not be inactivated once they are superseded? <clears throat> you might want to use it later. Inactivating a course module may affect eventless reporting. You can inactivate them, and you should, or this could affect the format. 
So why should course modules not be inactivated once they are superseded? So you're unlikely to want to use it later, but inactivating the course module may affect event misreporting. It may also affect, other than that, it might also affect reissuing of units of competency in record of results or statements of attainment. So by removing the course module, you might inadvertently upset the reporting if a document includes that topic and by connecting that course module in the reporting period. And by connection, that course module in the reporting period. Okay, so you might have an effect on reporting. So you've got to be careful about that. Okay, so if you remove a topic from a document, does that affect the topics on course modules on other documents or courses? That is to say, you remove a topic from a document, what else is going to happen? What is going to happen beyond just that document? Is it going to affect the topics or course modules on other documents or courses? And the answer, of course, is no. It's not going to affect the topic. The topics or the course modules on any other documents or courses. Affecting, changing one on one document is not going to affect, have an effect on others. So removing a topic from a document has no effect on the topics on other documents, nor on courses. Topics are copied from the document uh, to the document from the course date and are independent. So they're completely independent. So here's an activity. You can uh, create a test course master with a format that refers to a topic and a course module. Okay, so I want you to create a test course master, as I mentioned before, with a format that refers to a topic and course module, then create a document and allocate some outcomes to that document. Update the course module with different data, confirm this data appears on the existing document topic. Okay, so I'm getting you to confirm that changing the course module does have a knock-on effect in all the other places. And then if you want to do an advanced activity, create some more documents with outcomes on the same test course date or test master, and now add new topics and course modules. Copy these to the documents and have a look at the changes. Just get familiar with what happens when you do these things. And if you're doing it within a test course master, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable about making a mistake because you're probably going to make mistakes. You learn nothing from success, right? You've got to make some mistakes sometimes. So make some mistakes and have a look and see what happens when you make those mistakes and you can become um, a better person. No, I mean, you get to know course sales better, better person. No, it's almost the same. Okay, so here's some useful guides. Go to our YouTube channel. Um, uh, go to the guides within course sales. Um, go, go to wizards, see the wizards, the tickets online, the online chat, the help files. Um, have a look at the history if you want to go back quickly to documents. And of course, there's some references here that you can have a look at. That's in ASQA um, when it comes to updating units of competency. Yes. Yeah. Making mistakes. That's pretty normal, guys. Don't you worry about it. Um, so that's the end of that topic. Now, um, we've actually got a little bit of time left. I, there's no reason for you to hang around if you don't want to. I'm not too fussed if you hang around, but I do want to actually go through this because this is something that's been asked for and I wanted to create a video for some people. Um, so I'm actually going to go through this. Extra, think of this as a bonus, okay? Um, so before I do this though, I, I do want to just open up the floor to answer any questions about this, um, about these, these previous topics. Um, so I'll, I'll just show this, this screen here. So I'll, I'll unmute you guys and just see if you've got any comments you want to make about that particular sort of updating units of competency. Hey there guys. So any, 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 any questions? I mean, it's good to see you're embracing the idea of making mistakes. I like that. That's, that's, the, that's the first step. <laughs> that's it. Over, it seems overwhelming some of it when, when you get into it and you start playing around and start understanding, you then figure it out. And I suppose for Kate, if you, I can always help you if, if, I, if you want to ask me anything, you're more than welcome to. Um, I think one of the things I, I learned, Scott, was that even though you might name something, you can always change the name because higher than the name is whatever record course sales keep. So it doesn't matter how you name something, 
the, the flow on effect through the record. It's always there. If, um, yes. Yeah, that's right. It stays there, right? So you change the name and you go back and, oh, good, it's got that new name that I added. But actually, yeah. it's the same unit and you're still, the reporting's still working. And so, yeah. and I, you know, I, I've had instances where I've literally just named something the odd one. I've just looked, like, put the odd one in and then gone looking for where does that odd one come up? Um, and you can change it back again if you want to. But odd one sounds like a cool name too. So. I do remember once I changed something and then I went, oh, I've just lost everything. And then I realized what I did and a simple tweak back, to, I think it was a course description or something. And then everything came back to where it was. So it was like, it was the big few moment. <laughs> yeah, so generally, well, throughout course sales, generally speaking, the name value, the name, if you have a look at a record, is something that's internally used by you, okay? So it's not something that would report on. It's not something that customers get to see. The name generally be, and then the other value we have is the label. Now, if any record uses a label, the label is the one we usually expect either the operator or the customer to see. So. Uh, thank you for your offer. Oh. No, we can hear you. Okay, that's cool. Um, thanks for your offer, Kane. That's really nice. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I guess a lot of it is terminology. I'm not quite familiar with the terminology um, in in how it relates across course sales. So, yeah, I guess I've got to do a bit of playing and looking at some um, YouTube videos again just to I, follow up on it. <laughs> I promise you, Kate, I'm still not over all the terminology or understand, but when you understand how they're connected and they work, that's where you sort of get a better understanding. Yeah, a bit like dominoes and they go click, click, click. Oh, that makes sense now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. 